10,000 Latin, unknown Latin patriots fought in the American Revolutionary War. This was somebody's mom. It was, it is somebody's um, family members. It is somebody's friend. Too many whites are watching. Not enough Latinos are watching. No women are watching. Too many Latinos are watching. Every day was a new issue. When you get right, <laughs> when you get right, then you find writer people for yourself, you know? <laughs> Anything you've learned from being in so many high profile relationships that you bring to this relationship that you think is better or different? No, it was more about me. It wasn't like so much the high profileness of them or anything like that. Even though you got to keep certain things sacred, I mean, we're in the era of oversharing on social media and everything like that. It's like, even if you don't want to, you are. Because yeah. you can't, like, be on there without you know letting it out because you get happy and you whatever right. right but i think it was more about um i don't know like me like me fixing me mm. to make these to make a relationship work you know i don't think it was anything had to do with anybody else including the media or anybody but didn't hurt to find the right guy well that <laughs> when you get right <laughs> Then you get right, then you find writer people for yourself, you know? <laughs> okay, I've got to ask you before I let you go, uh, on behalf of all of America, but particularly America's women, um, how you do it. No caffeine, no alcohol, no. lots of sleep. What is the secret? Yeah, it's, sleep is a, it helps, you know, and people always go, how do you get sleep? It's just like, get seven to nine hours of sleep, okay. like carve it out. Yeah. Now the other hours of the day, I'm going full speed. Right. I'm full speed on the rest but when I lay down and I'm like okay I'm, I need my rest and when I don't get it then something's gonna suffer you know like it's it will and I've, I've learned that and I've hit the wall I've had the nervous breakdown where I freeze up and I'm like from doing too much and not getting sleep and all that so that's super important to me I can't do that now that I have kids you know I right. can't that's have right. the freeze up right yeah <laughs> comedian, filmmaker, and playwright. His latest one-man show, Latin History for Morons, <laughs> offers a rapid-fire lesson in overlooked Latin history. After a successful run on Broadway, the show is now hitting the road. And John Leguizamo was here to tell us all about it. Good morning to you. Good morning to I all I was you. just telling you off-camera, you have at least 70 million projects happening right now. They all converged on and, me. And, it, not, it wasn't supposed to happen But like you're that. doing well, so let's start with yeah. this. You had a very serious reason for wanting to do this. Tell us how this came about. Well... My son was being picked on at school, kind of racially profiled by the kids. How old is he? Uh, he at that time, he was, he was 12. 12, okay. Uh, eighth when grade. he was 12. Yeah, okay. when he was 12. And uh, so I wanted to give him, like, ammunition. I wanted to, him to fight with words. Mm. So I started doing all this research about Latin history and it, so he could really be proud of himself. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and And it, it helped a little bit. It helped me a lot more. I'm the one that really... Learned the most mm -hmm. out of it. I'm the one that unmoronized myself. Unmoronized. <laughs> what was surprising as you were digging through Latin history? Well, uh, uh, that 10,000 Latin, unknown Latin patriots fought in the American Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. Puerto Ricans, Colombians, Mexicans, Native Americans, and freed slaves under this Latin guy, Galvez, uh, Bernardo Galvez. Mm -hmm. And he gave $70,000 worth of weapons to George Washington. Mm -hmm. Ooh. It's wow. amazing because you read all of the reviews and they talk about how you learn so much. It's smart and it's funny. I mean, you do it all. We're looking at this video here. How do you do it all in one swoop? People walk away. They 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 are laughing. They feel smarter. And your energies. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, feel smart. they do. And how do you they choreograph do all that yeah. writing on the chalkboard? <laughs> oh, I, that's not, that, that's a lot of practice. I practice <laughs> all the all the things I'm drawing. The American map, so I look you know legit, and, and the Latin map too because I, I didn't know that one as well. And then there's a lot of. Uh, anatomical parts I draw, ah. and I have to practice that as well, believe it or not. <laughs> that you, there's this vocalizing thing that you do before each show. Oh, yeah, I got it. I got to warm up, because I, I want to be able to yell and scream and connect with these people. Yeah. So I start doing all of my, everything I learned in college, you know, mm -hmm. and from Joan Later, my voice teacher, it'd be like, beep, whoop, whoa, whoa, da, 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 are you okay in there? Yeah, they're deaf. They went deaf. to that. You got a hit. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Now, you're also, you're also part of uh, uh, this terrific show on Netflix, uh, uh, When They See Us, uh, you know, the look at the Central Park Five. What, what was that like, reliving that? Wow, that, that, that was rough, you know. Um, 
e even in the reading, Michael K. Williams and myself, we we broke down. Mm -hmm. I mean, just just reading the script out loud, uh, it, it was really difficult. You know, I hung out with the father, uh, Santana Senior, and the, and the son, and uh, I brought the other actors with me. And we we spent a lot of time together to bond and to really portray what really happened. How confused the father was at the mm -hmm. time, that he really thought that the innocence of his son would clear him, even if he signed papers right. to the confession. He thought somehow innocence is like a magic bullet, but it, but it's not. You know what got me is your story, it, it transcends even the powerful story that it is, and the part that made me cry was your part where you talked to your son all of the time when he was in, no matter what happened, as a father, you were always there. Yeah, and I think yeah. a lot dad, of people... His dad was a beautiful dad. Oh. He, was so, he was so into his son's life and, and really to be a part of it. And... And it's a hard transition. I mean, these kids were innocent children. They were children. Mm -hmm. And then they came out through the prison system. Now they're, they're, they're different people. And, and you got to bring them into your life and help them rehabilitate. Two passions. <laughs> you don't just have cake. <laughs> there, you have passion, and his name is Joe Manganiello. Okay, no. Well, if would... that's not enough motivation. <laughs> Hello. No. By the way, stop it with him. Can you please tell Look us what it's like? Because we've had um, him sitting in this chair well, and we are, I, we couldn't believe it. I feel like I am like, a, he, to me, he's like another species. <laughs> like, I look at him and he's like, I feel like I am like in the movie E.T. Remember <laughs> when like an alien lands and I am the one that gets to play with it? He's like... <laughs> <laughs> you are one lucky That's what human feel. being. You are one lucky human being. <laughs> wow. Like, yeah. So I can't complain. I'm 42, uh, girls. No. Hello. <laughs> when you turn 42, when I turn 42, I too could have him? Yes. yes. You could have him. him. Not him. him. But one like him. <laughs> but one like him. Is the paparazzi all over the place yeah. now with you too? Yes. A little, it's a little too crazy, but you know, I guess you just have to mm -hmm. accept it. But sometimes I get a little too... You know, it's fun yeah. too, because when you're starting to go out with somebody, you want to go places, you know? You don't mm -hmm. want to be like, Stuck like inside. you want to live new experiences, go to restaurants and things. Right. So it's like, you know, you know, we, you know we, we want to be your best friend. Yeah, can we? You can be my best I friend. Can tell How right can you away? tell? You have to have cake for me. Okay, okay we'll make it. When you Day one, too many whites are watching. Not enough Latinos are watching. No women are watching. Too many Latinos are watching. Every day was a new issue. You have an 80% positive rating among blacks and Hispanics. Yay. Okay. But not as high among other whites and Asians. Subliminally, I, I made the show very diverse. I say subliminally because I, I don't want to toot the horn and say, look how everybody looks. That's the way I see the world. Lopez grew up in Los Angeles of Mexican heritage and was raised by his grandmother. He began his career doing stand-up comedy. People look at me when I'm on the golf course and they go, is he on break? <laughs> and his big break came from Sandra Bullock. Backstage, she said, I want to explore what's in your life, what's in your act, because it's like a train wreck and I can't turn away. We've been waiting for you, my child. That introduction led to his first television show, George Lopez. Here comes Ramon the Towel Boy. <laughs> oh, God! Not a day goes by that I don't uh, thank her. The last time you were here... In 2009, Lopez went on to host a late-night talk show, Lopez Tonight. But his roots have always been in stand-up comedy. Up on stage and doing stand-up, it's the freest form of expression that you can have. In a political year, Lopez has endorsed Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders. I made a joke about supporting Bernie Sanders and then not wanting to pay more taxes. So people are like, he doesn't know what he's talking about politically. I'm a comedian. It's a joke. But he has also spoken out about Republican candidate Donald Trump. I don't uh, like Donald Trump's politics. To call Mexicans rapists and criminals, um, it's just mean. If he wins, I'm leaving the United States and I'm taking Eva Longoria with me. <laughs> Lopez devotes time to his community. Merry Christmas, girls. He has an annual toy giveaway where every child at his former elementary school receives a gift during the holidays. I think the reason that I enjoy helping people is I know what it's like to be in need. And I know what it's like to go to bed hungry. I go personally hand every kid a toy. Thank you. I do it because uh, we didn't have anything growing up. So it helps to, you know, see a kid get a toy. It's, it's nice. And through his foundation, Lopez raises awareness about kidney disease. 
He had a genetic condition with his kidneys, and in 2005, his wife donated one of her own to him. Lopez lost 45 pounds after the operation. Now, Lopez continues to make strides for the Latino community. I just want to say that I appreciate that. We don't think the same, we don't eat the same, we don't vote the same, we don't even talk the same language. I'm not trying to encompass all Latinos, I'm just trying to tell my story. Over the course of my career, I've seen more cohesiveness between Latinos. There's a unity there that I would not say that wasn't there maybe 25 years ago. Well, ben Stiller says he wrote this part with one person in mind. He's, it had to be you. He yeah, saw you as, I, me. yeah, I mean, that's got to be exciting. I'm so excited because I've done more comedy in my country and in my own language, but not so much in America, only the work that I've done with Woody Allen and a little more. So I felt like he was giving me a great opportunity. Can you reenact the phone call when Ben called you and he said it's Zoolander? Yeah, I was actually buying diapers in a supermarket <laughs> in <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> The phone rang and it was Ben and he gave me the news. First I was so excited that he was going to do the sequel because I had no idea. And then he told me he was writing with me in mind and I love the character because he, she seems like the normal one, like the uh, smart one of the group, but little by little you discover that she is a freak uh, like them. <laughs> so she, ha she has to have a little freak in her because she, she comes to find herself having feelings for Derek. What do you think she sees in Derek? Yeah, that's the thing. Like yeah. She has this deep connection with Derek Zoolander. And, well, let's not say what happens <laughs> later, but they do have a big connection. Yes, yes, they do. The premiere was last night. Yeah. I have to show the video from it. It's awesome. You guys walk down the catwalk in character. You see it right there. There you are. Oh, there's Derek. Was that fun? It was fun, but I, I, it was delirious because I got off the plane from Europe. I didn't know where I was, and then I got there running, put on this outfit, and there I was with Derek, Mogatu, and Hansel, <laughs> and 20 top models. <laughs> so I think I, I said yes because I had the protection of my character and I was with the, with the boys. And it didn't matter if I fell in the floor, if I didn't do it right, it didn't matter. No, I had that protection, otherwise I wouldn't have said yes. You've been training, dude. You mean you look good there? If I looked as good as that, I'd, I'd be naked on the television. You'd get the show all the time. Oh, no, I'd, be sat, right, I'd be here naked right now if I could write come more out scenes off. right before we were filming. I should be naked in this part. <laughs> was it awkward for you, Mike, that you are on your well, second day of show shooting? It, like, and... He didn't show it, but I'm like, yeah, it was. It was a little bit awkward, you know. And then, <laughs> and plus, he's really tall and he's got a six pack, so I was like, oh. well, I had. I got I had, had a six yeah. pack. Yeah, yeah, I got a four pack going strong. We've been touring the country, showing people the movie, and doing. Q&As and stuff, and what we like to do in each city is uh, eat until we get into a coma, so oh. we take all the local, you know, food items, so. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so in yeah. Philadelphia, I had bit. two cheesesteaks in under two 12 minutes. Two cheesesteaks, yeah. like a foot long, like, yeah. come on. Is that right? That's too yeah. much. And you still look like that? No, I don't look like that. That's what I'm know. saying. Now, That's why I had to now, take advantage okay. of that. Yeah. Keep up, Simmons. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your brother's a cop? My did brother he, is a cop, Did he help yeah. you in this role at all? Um, not at all. <laughs> like he, uh, like you know, he he called. He saw the movie. He loves it, you know. And he's like uh, a gearhead, like you are. Um, and he's, you know, he still says the same thing. He's like, Mike, you were really good at the pretending to be a cop, Mike. I'm the <laughs> real thing, pretending. buddy. Because he is. Because he is. He's like, he, he works at a correctional office, mm -hmm. or, or not correct. Like, he works in a jail. He's literally okay. in jail. Right. Uh, older wow. brothers, that you could be the first sitting president to cure Doesn't cancer, matter. and an older brother's like, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, right. It's okay. Yeah. You did all right. Yeah, you did okay. Not easily impressed. No, uh -huh. not at all. Uh, but you did some of your stunts on the bikes, right? I did because I'm such a fan of motorcycles and riding. I specifically wrote myself things to do in the movie to show off. You know, Be yeah. naked, ride bikes. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah. Good. It's, it's, yeah. There's no scenes about playing chess. I would have crushed that. No, no, you don't see me reading a book in this movie. Yeah, no, none of my strong suits. Well, guys, guys love the movie. So much you. fun having yeah, you here. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for having us. Chips is in theaters tomorrow. Coming up next. <laughs> You. So we want to talk about the movie in just a second, yeah. but we want to talk about the news this morning. You are mm -hmm. from the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. Obviously, what happened in El Paso on Saturday has touched you in a personal way. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I can't talk about it. Now as a mom, like everything makes me cry because I think about that could have been my child. That could have been my mother. My mother goes to Walmart three times a day. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's always heartbreaking and horrifying, but it's inevitable. 
uh, I mean, it, people think it's inevitable, and it's not. Mm. We can change it, and I just hope that um, that there's some real changes that are going to be made. I know it really, when it happens in your hometown, your home state. But that's, I think that's the problem, is people aren't really aggregating or getting outraged because it's not in their state, or it's not their child, or it's not their mom, but you have to think this was somebody's mom. Mm. It was. It is somebody's um, family members. It is somebody's friend. And so I just think, you know, it is a mental health problem. I get that, but it's also a gun problem. I know. Um, and being, sorry, being from Texas, too, I understand the Second Amendment. I grew up with, you know, that environment, and it's not about about taking guns away. It's about making sure responsible people have them. Well, yeah. uh, we wanted to talk about it because I know your heart is with yeah. that community right now. We also have something happy to talk about, which is a mm -hmm. cool new movie, <laughs> Dorothy. You're a very, very inspirational for uh, uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, uh, I'm down 110 pounds. You, so, I was uh, going to say, you look great. <laughs> he fits in the chair. <laughs> You're not so fluffy anymore. I'm right? still a big dude, but uh, I'm down from 437 to right around 3 uh, 320. Good wow. for you. Yeah. That's great. What so are you doing to, to lose it? I stopped eating bread. Yeah. Believe it or not, bread will yeah. take you down. People, I'm known for being the guy that eats chocolate cakes and stuff, so I stopped eating uh, whole cakes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Me too. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It oh, oh, this is what's called a slice. Yeah. <laughs> what a concept. So, you know, you've been doing stand-up for years. Uh, I mean, and yet, you know, you're such, you're such a young guy. I mean, Thank you. what was it like, I mean, when you first started? Did, is this what you've always wanted to do? This is what I've always wanted to do. Uh, I actually had the dream of becoming a comic when I was 10 years old. I saw Eddie Murphy Raw on TV, and I said, I want to do that. And it wasn't on regular TV, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> And, and now you've got this big show Friday at MSG, which is a huge deal. So what can fans expect? Uh, Madison Square Garden. I mean, it's the uh, it's the most famous, iconic building yeah. in the world. And so to be playing it, only a handful of comedians have been able to do that. So I'm very, very happy to be part of that. And uh, the prep that goes into that, I mean, it's a big show. There's production. Yeah. Yeah. I tell people it's like WWE meets the Food Channel. <laughs> you know, so the two together, there's pyro, there's all kinds of lights and stuff. I mean, it's, just, it's not a regular comedy show. It's like a rock concert with comedy. But as far as what you will do, your your act, do you change it at all? For when, I mean, you look, you started off in these small clubs, and, and now you're playing one of the biggest stages in the world. Is it, But is it still basically you doing the same kind of material? Uh, yes. Uh, whatever was on TV a second ago, I've, I've changed the entire show. It's a, it's a brand new hour. I'm getting ready for my new special. So, yeah, every uh, every six months, i, I got to rotate it out. Wow. Right. It is. I cried for sure. But I couldn't tell if that was because of what was happening or because it hit me that this these characters that we've been voicing for tw almost 12 years yeah. were saying goodbye to you. Did you guys actually kiss on that? I heard, I felt, I heard, yeah. hear the kiss. How did that How happen? How did they record we that? We never saw each other in no, the entire No, uh, we didn't spin. record once together on Best this one. Best gig this ever. The first time we're meeting each other. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right she here. seems lovely. <laughs> so this is the last one. Yeah, when you heard of that this was going to be it, yeah. what did you guys think? Because this thing you felt like could have gone on forever. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, all good things must come yeah. to an end. And uh, I think it's the most important is that we end the right way. And, yeah. and I think that if you get to the ending of this movie, uh, this is the ending that our characters and our fans deserve. Uh, but it's, yeah, inherently a bit melancholy. But you guys have been doing these characters. I didn't know this was a TV show. Yes. Yeah. And you had done the original voices for these characters then. So. Yeah. yeah, six seasons of a TV show and three movies later. So back on TV season one, did you ever imagine that this thing would turn into such a like a juggernaut that it is? And what was it about it that, that you think yeah. caught people? I mean, I think it's kind of hard to anticipate something becoming a global phenomenon. Yeah. yeah. We, we believed it was good. Yeah. You... you can never know what the life it, it, that it's going to have is. But I think personally what makes these films so amazing is that there's so much heart and depth and there's always an incredible story at the at the yeah. core of it right. and message really as a as a grown-up i love watching these movies but i also can't wait till my son is old enough to right. discover these because of the the stories that it tells and the messages that each film has be proud just, of the work yeah, yeah you guys are both great up. actors i do radio i was doing radio yesterday i was in sweats and a t-shirt with spaghetti sauce on it i mean <laughs> it really is fantastic this as a gig for an actor carson is this a cry for us? In the house. Thank you so much for having me. I feel me. sitting on a different set. I mean, you're sitting on your set every day, all the time, and now you're plopping down here. 
Got a glass of vino. I, by the way, big fan <laughs> of day drinking, so I'm, I'm all about this. No, thank you so much for having me. You, you, you know I love you, and this is great. Everybody's like family right here, so it's great. We, I always have a great time. We love our Mario, and um, by the, we got a lot to talk about with Mario, including I'm going to ask him in a few minutes why he's on the front page of the New York Times. <laughs> We're going to talk about that oh in gosh. a bit. But wait. So this is a first for the Lopez family. Yes, the whole Lopez fam bam is here in New York. It's my first, uh, uh, the kids' first trip to New York City. I'm surprised. Like, they never made this flight. They, they, they've flown a lot. They've right. got passports. Right. We've been, we've yeah. traveled a little bit. For, but New York City, for some reason, they haven't. So um, Saturday we came and we went to the Sugar Factory, which is sort of like Willy Wonka. I've never the been. Factory. What's that like? Oh, my gosh, your kids will is love it. it. Is it, it awesome? It, it, they, they give you these huge goblets that <laughs> yeah. look like it's like a Halloween deal. And <gasps> they're, they're, Look at that. And it's like, uh, it, it's so much fun. Well, the adults, by the way, <laughs> like, that's like a super Mai Tai. So that what? was filled with alcohol, too. So it's a fun adult beverages, too. And they say, we always pretend it's someone's birthday. Yeah. <laughs> so my daughter goes along with it. We thought we said it was her. So that was Saturday. Wait, wait, what do you mean you always pretend it's someone's birthday? So that way they sing and it's, a, you know, make it a whole party. It's just, it's just, it's just our thing. All right, so you And then on that. Sunday, uh, yeah. I went to church here. Yes, yeah, so where'd you go? Uh, I went to uh, Padre Pio, St. Saint, Saint John the Baptist. Okay. Um, which, which was great. Nice a little church. And then I, I uh, squeezed in a jujitsu lesson, one of the Gracie brothers. Who with are Ebert you? Gracie. Well, I like this kid. There it is right there. So I got to roll around. Wait a minute. Do you know how to do that? Yeah. I've been doing it for a while. I'm a blue belt now. You know, my kid inspired me. I got him involved to it, my kid Nico. And then I saw him, and I was like, that looks like fun. So I wanted to learn while he Can learned. I ask an idiotic question? Jiu-Jitsu is what exactly? Jiu-Jitsu. 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 <laughs> no, that's okay. God bless you.